This week on RPM, the sparks fly on the Stenaline Ulster Rally. We go in car and into the fields with one of the local stars of the big event. We splash around Balmoral as the stars have fun on the Stena Challenge. The Stenaline Ulster Rally is Northern Ireland's round of the Mobile One British Championship. But before the serious action begins, the crowds have the chance to soak up the evening sun at the Stena Challenge and Balmoral Showgrounds. It's a fun and game sort of event and appropriately this year in the blazing heat, the organisers have introduced a water splash for extra entertainment. The event consists of two runs for 20 invited crews over a specially constructed stage inside the Balmoral complex, using the access roads and car parks. The water splash will be used for a second time on the first leg of the main rally. For added fun, those unsung heroes of rallying the service crews have a big role to play in the challenge. Just yards from the finish line, they have to change the front two wheels of their cars, and with so little difference between the drivers, the speed of the service crews can make all the difference. Eventually, the challenge comes down to a battle between three cars. The Volkswagen Golf of Austrian Raymond Baumschlager on his second Ulster appearance. The Group N Subaru Impreza of Welsh rally winner David Higgins, who misjudges his pit stop slightly. But the outcome all depends on the final run of Neil Weirden and his Armagh co-driver Trevor Agnew in their Vauxhall Astra Formula 2 kit car. They'd been fastest on the first run by less than half a second from Higgins. And helped by a perfect pit stop, they keep their cool to set fastest time of the night and win by two seconds. Belfast Lord Mayor Bob Stoker is there to present the winners with their awards and watch the service crew get their reward too, a soaking in champagne. The Stenaline Ulster International is round five of the British Formula 2 series and despite lasting little more than 24 hours, is considered one of the most demanding and difficult in the championship. The imposing structure of Belfast City Hall provides the backdrop for the start and Donegal Place in the heart of the city, a pedestrian precinct on any other Friday afternoon, finds itself filled with brightly coloured cars, shirt sleeve crowds and plenty of lovely promotion girls. Even the Lord Mayor is back to see the crews on their way. Last year's winner Gwyndaf Evans has time for a last minute interview. And the fans focus their attention on a newcomer to Northern Ireland, rising young Finnish star Tony Gardemeister. But the big hope for a home win rests with Trevor Agnew and Neil Weirden's Vauxhall Astra. A kit car in your home event, a dream come true. Superb mate, yeah I can't wait. Uh, the atmosphere we had last night at the King's Hall for the Stenic Challenge. If that's uh, the same atmosphere we're going to meet today, it's going to be superb for us. There's Ulster interest in the production cup for Group N cars too. There's a lot of boys, a lot of local men out to try and beat us this weekend, so uh, it's home stages, yeah, but David has no real knowledge of them. We'll just be going as hard as we possibly can to beat. Hopefully to beat the rest of the guys, so uh, if we come out in front, we'll be happy. What do you think of the opposition this weekend? Well, it's probably as, as big a, a Group N entry as ever been in this country, so yeah, we'll have a go with them. And you're the reigning Group N champion. Do you think you can come out and talk tomorrow evening? I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could be. British Championship leader Tapio Laukonen has the honour of leading the field over the starting ramp to begin the first leg of seven stages through counties Down, Armagh and Antrim before returning to Belfast and two more sprint stages at Balmoral. These two spectator stages run in reverse direction to the Stena Challenge the previous night. The first stage starts just south of Banbridge and in temperatures more in keeping with this south of France. The first man into view is Laukonen in the bright yellow Renault Maxi Megane. The Finn has already won three times this year and needs only a safe finish in the top three places to become British champion. He's fastest on the first stage, but then rips a rear wheel off the Renault on stage two. Yeah, it was a bad start. Uh, there was a quite tight left hand and um, we were just driving too, too fast for that one and we went off the road. I turned it basically straight over the ditch and there was some kind of big stone or something on the ground which hit the rear wheel and we lost the wheel and plenty of time of course. A complete new rear axle is fitted in service at Newry and Lokonen returns to the fray in 83rd place. Renault teammate Martin Rowe, however, is in bigger trouble, launching his McGann over a hedge. As we see from on board Ollie O'Donovan's escort, co-driver Derek Ringer signals a warning to the following cars. And jump to right. Further back on stage one, though, a serious incident is about to unfold. From the fan cam of Stephen Dunn, we see Tony Gardemeister's Seat Ibiza approaching the fifth junction on the stage. 
It understeers viciously on the melting tower and instead of going left, slides to the right and crashes into a wall, injuring a number of spectators. Gardemeister's teammate Barbara Armstrong has also crashed on the same stage and she limps slowly on towards service in Banbridge with a front wheel askew. There are even problems for Gwyndaf Evans and he loses ground with a power steering problem on his set. He's back in fourth after two stages. But 1997 winner Mark Higgins has started strongly and he leads in the Volkswagen team's Sunny Golf GTI. Neil Wearden is ducking and diving in his Astra kit car. He's two seconds behind his Vauxhall teammate, Jarmo Catalato, who's second. The other Higgins younger brother, David, leads Group N in his Welsh rally winning Subaru. Derek McGarrity and Victor Carruthers are close behind in their similar car. McGarrity has been driving Group A cars this year and has returned to Group N specially for this event. The Donald brothers, Mark and Rory, are in home territory, unfortunately aren't going far in this rally. 60 downhill, 5 left, 4 right. Co-driver Rory calls the notes as they tackle stage 2, no more than 10 two miles left, from their home 60, in Guildford. Right, All is going well in their Honda Civic right until they reach a section with loose gravel. That's it, you can hear beating against the underside of the car. Long 4 right, 40. They get away with a small overshoot, but bigger trouble is just around the corner. Right, 60. Whoopsie, that fairly minor brush with the County Down Bank okay. proves costly and the former Tarmac Junior right, Champions 60. are forced to retire shortly afterwards. Well, one left, 40. Service anyway. Long two left. Meanwhile, up at the front, Weirden and Agnew have stepped up the pace. Yes, that is Weirden all right, and he has taken the lead. The Austrian Raymond Baumschlager has moved into second place. And in third, it's the amazing turbo diesel Golf, crewed by Neil Simpson and another Ulster co-driver, Michael Gibson. David Higgins is up to fourth place in building his lead in Group N. Caitalato, however, has been in trouble and things are about to get worse for the Finn. They are steadily getting worse for the SEAT team too. Mike Brown is on his way out. He abandons the stricken Ibiza after an accident, but at some cost to Group N contender Johnny Milner. And then the other side, at the back. What happened, Johnny? Oh, the bloody SEAT packed right on the corner. Had any warning, just bang. And Johnny just got round him and clouded the back end on him. Derek McGarrity is still second in Group N, but he's dropping back from Higgins. Five right minus, and yet he crashed into five left, minus, and 34 right plus. He's about to pass Caitaletto's abandoned Astra. Victor Carruthers calls the notes, minus. and McGarrity explains 60. the problem. The kill switch has gone fault down, the slave touch right. turns the car off. Every jump, the car turned off, so I was driving with the one hand on the wheel. And you were lying 10th overall second in Group N before that? Yeah, well, we could... If we could have a run, we definitely could get onto the pace. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but we're not having the run. Nevertheless, McGarrity is still well into the top ten, and the Irish drivers are making their presence felt. Stephen Whitford is eighth and third in Group N in the Jukes Transport Mitsubishi. Seamus Leonard, Group N leader in the Tarmac Championship after three wins this season, is fourth and ninth overall. Robert Woodside is just outside the top ten in his Mitsubishi. And he's closely followed by a former British and Irish tarmac champion, Trevor Cathers. Gene Megan, Leonard's big rival for the tarmac title, is next in the Mitsubishi train. Followed by Richie Holfeld in, yes, another Mitsubishi. Harold Bunting, however, struggles through, having inflicted some damage to his Lancer. The leading Irish contender in Formula 2 is Ollie O'Donovan, but things aren't going altogether smoothly inside the McKinstry Motorsport Escort RS2000. The car had a misfire on stage 1, and on stage 2 the engine was cutting out. Now the hazard lights indicate O'Donovan's in trouble again. The Escort has punctured a wheel, and he's forced to pull over to let a following car through. After a second service halt in Armagh, the rally turns back towards Belfast and the waiting spectators have plenty to talk about, especially members of the McGarrity family. 
Derek's doing pretty well, in fact. The bomb slagger is on his way out with engine trouble. And the Mitsubishi train is about to suffer a derailment. See, Robert Woodside stopped at that, uh, the start of that last stage there. He must have broken something, so... Do you think he'll get going again? I don't think so, no. He was on the mobile, so it didn't look good. Back in Balmoral, while we wait for the main rally to arrive, Ian Glenister provides the entertainment in his historic and unusual rally car, a Lada Riva Estate. He's a real barrel of laughs. But this rally is turning out to be no laughing matter for Seamus Leonard and co-driver Jerry McBay. They complete the first leg in a fine sixth place overall, but are then excluded for failing to book into a time control earlier in the day. Their exit puts Gene Megan in the driving seat in Group N. Leonard's sudden departure moves Whitford up to seventh overall. But McGarrity is best of the Irish drivers at the end of day one. The master switch problem has been solved and he and co-driver Carruthers splash their way around Balmoral and enjoy fourth overall. The Group N leader, however, is still Higgins. He's 50 seconds in front of McGarrity and in third place. But ahead of him is still that amazing diesel golf of Neil Simpson and Michael Gibson. It's good, we're going hard, we're not taking any risks. We don't feel to be taking any risks, like, but seem to be doing the business. Neil Weirden, however, has one or two hairy moments, like this lurid slang when he was caught out in an oil slick with Baumschlager's blown engine. He heads back to Belfast and through the Balmoral stages to complete the leg in first place. Trevor Agnew's pleased with that. All in all, yeah, we're, we're in a good position. We're confident of the stages tomorrow. The car's going brilliantly now and we just need to get to the end. So at the overnight halt, the top three cars are all crewed by local co-drivers, plus an all-local crew in form. Day two on the Ulster Rally starts early, very early. That was the moon, not the sun, still high in the sky as the cars leave Belfast and head straight for Dungannon and the start of the Tyrone stages. Even so, there are still some early birds around as Weirton and Agnew continue their quest for the first British Championship victory. They're gradually easing away from Simpson and Gibson. The diesel Golf has had a new gearbox fitted overnight and the gear change is not as fluid as it had been. Headlights ablaze, Higgins and Patterson continue to set the group end pace and the Barrett Subaru still solidly in third place. But McGarrity and Carruthers are starting to fall back. The Euro Cable Subaru has developed a gearbox problem and Derek is having to be gentle with his gear changes. He drops back to sixth place and the gap to Higgins has grown to nearly two minutes. In fact, McGarrity is now just over half a minute ahead of the seventh place Mitsubishi of the two Stevens, Whitford and McCauley. Ollie O'Donovan is in trouble again. Just outside the top 20 after his fight back yesterday, Ollie is losing ground again. Listen as he and co-driver Connor Bruton exit this square left. And one right opens, go 10. They've lost most of the drive to the front wheels. The Escort has broken a drive shaft and it's all they can do to get the car to the end of the stage. They drop back to 60th and are overhauled by the grass-tracking Mitsubishi of Harold Bunting. Even at this hour, hardy and sometimes cheeky fans are gathering on every stage waiting for the arrival of the leading box hall. Weirden is still continuing his well-perfect progress and stretching his lead to almost two minutes. But the man who's setting the stage as a light this Saturday morning is Gwyndaf Evans. In sixth place overnight after a troubled first day, the 98 winner is on a charge and a string of fastest times moves his Seat into second place. Mark Higgins is also moving up, now third despite the VW team turning down his engine slightly after Baumschlager's exit. Mark has pushed past Brother, who has sensibly slacked his pace now that McGarrity has dropped back. <laughs> the big losers on the early morning stages are Simpson and Gibson. The Gulf's power steering pump failed at the start of stage 14 and they drop almost a minute, falling back to fifth place. McGarrity remained sixth and having to work his way around with a gearbox problem. There's no time to fit a new one, but a gentle, gentle approach works uh, most of the time. <laughs> Behind McGarrity, Whitford continues in seventh place, still third in Group N and still on course for his best result of British series. However, he's watching anxiously over his shoulder as the Toyota of Johnny Milner comes climbing back up the leaderboard after that first day incident with the Seat. He's fourth in Group N and is followed by the Mitsubishi of Cathars. Hofeld is sixth in his Mitsubishi. 
But Richard Tuttle, the only driver who could hold Higgins's march to the British Championship Production Cup, is well off the pace. He had to finish ahead of Higgins to keep the Cup Series alive into the final round in the Isle of Man, but it's nearly six minutes behind the leading Subaru. With Leonard Long gone, Megan is concentrating on making the finish to secure the lead in the Tarmac Series. The Peugeot 106 Cup is also being contested with a strong Irish interest. Martin Sansom leads the series, but his challenge comes to an early and dramatic end. He crashes and blocks the stage. And although he eventually got the car mobile again, he was excluded for exceeding the maximum lateness. Before his departure, however, he'd been trailing Mark Fisher, second in the series and winner of the last round. On home ground, he's plenty of support. I still need a maximum uh, score here, and uh, Rory Gallagher's pushing very hard. Uh, it's very close between us, so it's, uh, no, it's by no means easy. Marcus Dodd is a name more usually associated with the British National Championship, but he's a Peugeot contender too. Tarmac is Rory Galligan's preferred surface, and the young Irish driver emerges as Fisher's biggest rival. Rory is second at the end of the first day, despite the odd indiscretion. 12 seconds behind the lead, but there's very little in it. I mean, we lose a second with a missed gear change in these cars. Um, but as I say, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow is more bumps, much like home, so uh, looking forward to more. But just when Fisher seemed to have this vital second victory all tied up, disaster strikes. His Peugeot suffers gear linkage failure on unlucky stage 13. He and co-driver Gordon Noble eventually jam the car in third gear and continue but they've dropped three minutes and are back and forth. Stephen Clark, meanwhile, discovers that Irish tarmac is no easy surface to drive off. And ends his rally deep in a hedge on stage 15. But there's trouble waiting for Galligan too, and on the very last stage. About a quarter of a mile from the end of the stage. Um... Don't know whether it's the centre of the clutch or a drive shaft broken. The boys are working on it now to see if we can get it in. The service team resort to pushing the stricken car back to Belfast. It was all they could do, but they were never going to get away with it. Galligan was excluded. So Fisher and Noble take the victory. In the historic third place of Martin Boyle in his Ford Anglia consolidates his lead at the top of the historic Tarmac Championship. Philip Wiley takes second place in the MGB. With reigning tarmac champion Desi Nutt taking second win of the season with Geraldine McBride alongside him in the Porsche 911. And Ollie O'Donovan, he kept battling right to the end, clawing his way back up from 60th place to make it into the top 20. He's the top Irish Formula 2 finisher and leads the F2 category of the tarmac championship. No wonder he's awarded the Michelin Star Drive Prize. Now the final countdown, 16th place and 8th in Group N goes to Gene Megan and Dermot O'Gorman, now leaders of the production category in the Tarmac Championship. Richie Holfeld and Ian Grindrod take 13th, 6th in Group N. Trevor Cathers and Alan Whittaker, 12th, 5th in Group N. Tapio Lykonen and Kai Lindstrom were 83rd after Stage 2. They made it all the way back to 10th. On Stage 17, Higgins and Patterson plunged into a ditch, dropping them to 9th. Whitford and McCauley lost their grip on second place in Group N, but they still make it in eighth place. Justin Dell and Andrew Bargery put in another hard-charging performance, seventh in the little French-built Peugeot kit car. Sixth place and second in Group N goes to Johnny Milner and Duncan McMath in the Toyota. Neil Simpson and Michael Gibson must have done wonders for the morale of old diesel car owners as they finished fifth in the Volkswagen. In fourth place, winners of Group N, Derek McGarrity and Victor Carruthers in the Eurocable Subaru. This was a victory McGarrity wanted so badly. He never does anything the easy way. That was the last stage, his home stage at Tardry. Astonishingly, he escapes with the loss of less than a minute and still holds on to fourth place overall. Talk about a field of dreams. David Higgins and Brian Thomas come home third. Wendap Evans and Howard Davis blaze their way back to second place after Seth's disastrous start to the rally. But the winners are Neil Weirden and Trevor Agnew, who forged their partnership long before they joined the Vauxhall team. Yeah, it's at home now, just how special this is. 
uh, certainly to win your first international at home in the Ulster Rally, which is one of the most difficult. And to do it with, without any major problems, really, with a slight misfire of the car yesterday. And also to win this then the challenge, you know, it just proves how much determination, dedication the guys at RML have. They drove a faultless rally to record their first British Championship win and the first Formula 2 victory for Vauxhall's Astra kit car. But it's no change at the top of the Irish Tarmac Championship, with Ian Greer still in the lead. However, Gene Megan takes over the leading Group N from Seamus Leonard and James White.